Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Monday and it means it's time for a five by five. If you've never seen a five by five before, the idea is simple. I talk about five different things related to magic. I give myself five minutes to talk about each topic. There is a timer at the bottom that ticks down to zero. When I get to zero, I move on to the next topic. It's quick, it's snappy. You never know what you're going to get. Five by five really is one of my favorite videos of the week and it's super popular. Um, so this week, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. So let's get on with the first topic. Okay, so one thing that I want to do on this 5x5 is I want to talk about metal bending. And, uh, you know, it's something that a lot of magicians are interested in. I have been doing various different types of metal bending routines for years. Um, but one of the things I want to highlight for you today is liquid metal, uh, which was a routine that was brought out by Morgan Striebler. It is kind of the quintessential fork bending routine, and it is super commercial. Now, uh, I'm going to play you a live performance footage of me doing the liquid liquid battle routine to a bride and groom at a wedding. Um, this really is such a solid routine. It's one of the few routines that can work uh, close up. It can work at tables. It can work cabaret. I've done it on stage, uh, street. It's amazing. And all you need to do is carry around with you a, a fork. It's very non-linear, so you can shorten the routine or you can lengthen the routine depending on the environment you're in. Um, but I want to see, I want you to see how it actually plays in the real world. So this is me performing Forming liquid metal live on a head table at a wedding to the bride and groom, which should tell you what I think of the routine because I only perform the best stuff to the bride and groom. I knew that you would. Check this fork out, have a look at it, make sure it's okay. Make sure that uh, it's a normal fork. Yeah, Take your time, I get paid by the hour. Is yeah. it okay, it is, yeah. good. I'm gonna give you a pen. What I want you to do is put your, you've got new initials now, haven't you? I have. Oh, so excited. Put your new initials right there, is that okay? Right, okay. Just in the bottom of the fork, new initials. Yeah. By the way, Sharpie marker is the enemy of any bride with a lovely white dress, so please be careful. And then what I want you to do, on the other end, yeah. but on the other side, yeah. put the pin number to your credit card. I'm just, the look. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just put your initials again, that'd be really good. That'd be really good. You're too trusting. That's, that's, that's great. Okay, awesome stuff. Is that fair? Yeah. That's fair. Cool. So there's a reason I get you guys to do this. And the reason is, this makes this fork unique. So in other words, even if there's a million forks in the world, this is the only one with your initials on. So whether I hold it this way or this way, you can see it's your fork. Now, has anybody here ever heard of a guy called Yuri Geller? Yeah. Yeah. He's a guy that basically is from Israel, and he bends things with the power of his mind. He bends knives, forks, spoons, cutlery. He's basically a professional bender. That's what he does for a living. It's a, it's a top job. Now, I'm not going to do this. You are. Do you have a good imagination? Yeah. If you haven't, can you imagine you have? That would be good. Yeah. I'm going to take the fork and go up and down. I want you to say, bend. Right, okay. Have a go. Right. Bend. A little bit louder. Bend. And slightly more magical. Oh, that was so magical. <laughs> if I was a fork, I'd bend. That was so good. <laughs> Check this out, though. I'm going to go up and down. Get ready. Say, bend. Bend. And again. Bend. One more time. Bend. We'll get the fork. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh! I know! <laughs> I love the look on your face. You look like a rabbit caught in the headlights. Watch the fork. Three, two, one. Oh my god! And it really is bent. Touch it. Feel it. Look. Boom! I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Jeez. Let's go one step further. Hold your hand out for me. I'm going to unbend it and put it in your hand. Now squeeze tightly. And don't lie to make me look good. Right, Not okay. that you would, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> if I do this, be honest with me, can you feel it twisting? Yeah. This is something you're gonna feel for it, you're gonna remember forever. Do you remember you put your initials there? Yes. Yeah. And you put your initials on the other side. Yeah. Now your initials are on the same side. Oh my god! And the reason is in your hand it twisted like a corkscrew. Open up your hand and have a look. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you can be the strongest person oh in the world. God. It's impossible to twist a fork like that. Sir, try and untwist that fork. It can't be done. It, can. it can't be done. Not even if you put it in a vice can that be done. I, I, thank you. you look so, I'm going to go one step further. So go up and down. Just say stop. Stop. Watch the prongs. <laughs> you just did a double take. That was some, last one. Check this one. One, two. <laughs> Oh. And it's bent and twisted in seven different places. It's still got your initials on. This is my wedding gift from me to you. There you go. Give her a big, huge round of applause. <laughs> so while I've got you guys whipped up, with it. I know, right? Yeah, that's the, that's the challenge. You've got to eat the wedding breakfast with it now. Okay, we're gonna. Someone take a fork somewhere. Shall we? Um, 
Judy, one more. So one thing that I like to do on 5x5s that I haven't done for a while on a few of the latest 5x5s is address uh, address comments that sometimes are left by people on the uh, various videos that we put up. And I've got to be honest with you, I love reading all the comments. It's very, very difficult to reply to all of them because there's so many, but I do try. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I do try and reply to everybody. There was one particular comment that went up recently that I wanted to specifically address because it's something that's happened a few times. This is just the latest thing that's happened. And I just wanted to kind of address it. This isn't a rant. This isn't the sort of thing that I do on a Friday. Um, but it's a bit irksome. Now, let me explain. Um, a couple of weeks ago, or last week, or whenever it was, myself and Ryland reviewed Virtual Triumph. Um, which is an amazing trick, by the way. If you go back and look at the review show if you haven't seen it. It is unbelievable. And uh, we gave it a great review. I actually performed it on the review show. So what I did is I said, everyone, grab your cards. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's actually perform this trick. Uh, and you follow along with me. And I performed the trick. And, and I know from the comments and from people messaging me, a lot of people bought it based on that performance, which is wonderful. And you should do because it's such a great trick. And the nice thing about it is... There's something happening at your end which makes it even more deceptive. If you just follow, uh, if you just backtrack what you did in the video, you won't be able to get the clean displays that the magician gets. Anyway, uh, there was a guy that left a comment on the uh, on, on on the particular review show, and he said uh, he said that he wasn't happy with my review of Virtual Triumph, and the reason he wasn't happy with my review is because he felt like I exposed it, not exposed it. I didn't expose how it was done in my handling or anything, but he said that he made it very, I made it very, very easy for magicians to reverse engineer so that they could do it themselves without having to buy the product. Um, and, and he said that I should take it down and he doesn't think the creator would be happy. And that's why the creator released a, a trailer which doesn't actually show the full procedure and, um, and, and, and that I should take it down and that I, I, I didn't do the right thing. So that's what the guy said on the, uh, on the channel. And this is, this is something that's actually been said on this channel quite a few times. Oh, you shouldn't have performed this for this reason. You shouldn't have performed that for that reason. And, and I want you guys to understand that when I'm reviewing a product, I don't just half ass this stuff. I spend a long time learning the product. Sometimes I'll actually communicate with the creator. There are tricks that I wanted to review on this channel that I haven't because I wanted to do a full performance and having spoken to the creator, they didn't want me to do a full performance. Um, or I've decided not to do a full performance because I want everyone to know how good it is. Perfect example, Thought Master by Patrick Redford. I openly did not perform that because I knew that if I performed it, people could reverse engineer it. That is not the case with Virtual Triumph. Let me explain why. Three reasons. Number one, yes, magicians that are watching that Virtual Triumph performance could reverse engineer what I told them to do and do that same thing, but they're not going to understand what happens at the magician side of things. Because what the magician's doing, although it looks the same, it's actually very, very different. That's the first thing. The second thing is, Adrian, when he released Virtual Triumph, did not withhold performance rights. You know, I, I love a routine called Cubism, but I can't perform it on, on YouTube because performance rights are withheld. So fair enough. Um, you know, that's, that's cool. I, I knew that before I got it. That's not the case with this trick. Performance rights were not withheld. But the most important thing is, Penn and Teller have performed this exact trick to thousands of people on TV. They actually did it to the cast of CW to see some of the actors and actresses on CW. And they did exactly the same thing that I did in my review. There's Penn telling everyone what to do. And there's Teller doing the actions. If people could reverse engineer it from my performance, they could reverse engineer it from Penn and Teller's performance. But then you're probably thinking, well, maybe the, enter maybe the creator, Adrian, wasn't happy with Penn and, Ten Pen 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 and Teller doing it. Well, if that's the case, how come he took that full live performance of Penn and Teller doing it and put it on his YouTube channel and has currently had almost 20,000 views on it? If he was unhappy with a live performance, why did he put the Penn and Teller performance on his YouTube channel? The reason he did that is because he hasn't got an issue. If he hasn't got an issue with Penn and Teller performing it, and there's more people, there's more magicians that have gone and seen Penn and Teller perform it, well, 18,000 versus 1,700 that watch the review show. If he hasn't got an issue with that, he won't have an issue with this. So the message here is if you're one of these people that wants to jump in and accuse me of doing something, first of all, A, do your research, and then B, 
credit me with a little bit of intelligence. I don't just half ass this stuff. I actually do research beforehand. Okay, one thing I like to do in these 5x5s five five is I like to spotlight stuff that um, I, I think is important to spotlight, to be perfectly honest. And, and I wanted to talk to you guys about the photographic deck by Patrick Redford. Now, myself and Ryland actually reviewed this on episode two or three of the Craig Milan Review Show, but it was so long ago, the channel didn't have as many viewers as it does now. Um, and I wanted to spotlight this because since we reviewed this, both myself and Ryland have used this religiously. I mean, this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, I did an interview with Patrick Redford, which you should check out in on the Talk Magic playlist. But what Patrick's done is he's taken a deck of cards and he's turned this deck of cards into a deck of photographs. Now, I think the reason it's fallen under everyone's radar is this came out at around about the same time as Snaps by Penguin, David Jonathan and Dan Harlan. And that had so much buzz about it that I think this has flown under people's radar. And a lot of people aren't doing this and you really should. Because what Patrick's done is like I say, it's turned a deck of cards into photos. Each one of these photos is um, each one of these photos is a playing card, and once you know the system, you can tell immediately. Like this is the four of clubs. This one here is the two of hearts. Uh, this one here is the uh, well. You, you get the idea. And if you if you understand, this is actually mnemonica. That I've got these cards in mnemonica order, which allows me to take any deck. Uh, it allows me to take any memorized deck trick and do it with photos, which takes things to an entirely new level. Um, you don't have to be a mem deck user to use these. Um, you, just the whole idea of you look at a picture, you know immediately what that card is. It allows you to take your existing card routines and apply it to photos. And I wanted to just quickly perform a routine, just a simple mem deck routine with these, so you can see just how powerful this prop is. So I'm going to perform this to Sarah behind the camera, and we're going to do that right now. So, say I've got uh, a whole bunch of photos here. You could, you could, we haven't got much time, but you could look at these if you wanted to. Um, and I'm going to give them a, a quick cut. We'll give them a, a few cuts and a few mixes up. And I need you to help me if that's all right. Would that be okay? Yeah. Good stuff. We're going to try and do some mind reading, but we're going to do it with, uh, with photos instead. So what I'd like you to do, Sarah, is you're going to cut the cards. You know how to cut playing cards, I'm assuming. Um, what I'd like you to do is cut, you know, about a third of the deck or about a quarter of the deck, a small portion. That's great. And put those cards there and cut a few more and put them there and cut a few more and I put them there. And you've not really given me many cards left to work with, but that's, that's okay. That's fine. That's uh, not a problem. Okay, so we're going to try and do this. Uh, and we're going to start off. Uh, with this picture here, can you have a look at that for me? Can you just turn it around to the way? Um, yeah, can you can you have a look at that? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. You got it? Yeah. Okay, so let's see if we can do this one first of all. Concentrate on the picture. Um, it's a colourful picture, isn't it? It's not black and white, it's colourful. There are colourful and black and white photos in here, but it's a colourful picture, isn't it? It is. Um, I, see, I see tops of houses, does that make sense to you? Yes. Tops of houses? Um, like, like Almost like you're looking at like a view of like a city or something, but there's something yes. in the foreground. Is it like a, a weather vane or something like that? Is it weather vane or a cockerel or something yeah. like that? A cockerel, yes, there you, there you go. It's a cockerel with a whole bunch of houses. Now, maybe that was a fluke. It could have been a fluke. So I'll tell you what, have a look at, uh, have a look at this one. Check that one out. Uh, yeah. Have you got it? I'll show it to the camera as well. Yeah. Have you got that one? Yeah. Now, again, you could have cut anywhere you wanted to. I mean, I, I didn't... Um, um, influence you in any way. You could have cut any way you wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, but there's another picture. Now, this is another colourful picture, isn't it? It's got colour on it. It's got yeah. colour. It's got colour in it. Oh, that, yeah, you're right. There's black and white and colour, isn't there? Yes. Um, but this isn't like a city or anything like this. This is something... Um, this is something more... That, uh, it's soft, actually. It's soft, right? Is it soft? Yes. Some could say fluffy. Yeah. Now, we talked about a cockerel before. This is kind of another animal, isn't it? But it's not a cockerel, yeah. it's a bear. Is that a black and white picture of a bear holding a heart? It is. There it is, black and white picture of a bear holding a heart. And again, you could have cut any way you wanted to. I mean, this is just, this is just crazy, the fact that I can, I can do this. Uh, let's, let's try one more time. Uh, let's try one more time. This one right here, uh, we're not even going to look at it. I'm thinking this is, I'm seeing colour. I'm seeing London. I'm seeing the Union Jack. Why am I seeing the Union Jack? I'm seeing like Big Ben. I'm seeing a whole... It's like a postcard of London. Let's have a look. Look, there it is. It's a postcard of London with the Union Jack. It's got Big Ben. It's got a taxi. It's got a phone box. There you go. So that's just a simple example of what you can do with this deck of cards. I just did a simple new Monica deck. But because... 
uh, each card has a photo, I immediately know what the photo is and it makes it a lot cleaner. It's highly recommended. Right, so earlier on in this 5x5, five five, I did the live performance of Liquid Metal by Morgan Striebler. Uh, what I want to do is I want to do a mini review today of Liquid, liquid Metal and, more importantly, Liquid Forks by World Magic Shop. Um, I first learned Liquid Metal many, many years ago. And as you saw from the live performance earlier on, if you don't do Liquid Metal, I really think that you should. Uh, because of people like Yuri Geller, um, we're in a situation where everybody kind of knows about metal bending. And the amount of people that go, oh, can you bend something with the power of your mind? It happens all the time at live gigs. And also, if you can do a metal bending routine, it, it, it kind of gives you something very, very different to what other people do. Because everybody does card tricks, everybody does coin tricks. But you start bending metal and it starts being, um, you know, very, very different to anything anybody else does. Now, Morgan's routine, the liquid metal routine, really is spectacular. Uh, and I think one of the reasons it's so good is because normally with a metal bending routine, there's a lot of build up for one moment where the, where, the, where the fork or the spoon bends, which is absolutely fine. There's no problem with that in the right time and the right place. But a lot of places where you work commercially, it might be mix and mingle at a busy place or it might be table magic or restaurants or a wedding or a corporate event or something like that. When you do a lot of work like that, it's kind of, you've got to get people on side very, very quickly. You've almost got to beat them up with magic. And so building up for five minutes for one moment of magic, although that's great for right time, right place, it doesn't work in those environments. And with liquid metal, there's literally hit after hit after hit. It's like, boom, it's bending. It's bending again. Now the tines, and it builds. First of all, the tine bends. Then the actual fork bends. Then, the tie, you know, then you've got that twist in the middle. And all the different things that happen. And if you do the full routine that Morgan put together, you start with two forks. One actually bends and then breaks which is how I do it when I'm performing it in a parlor show or a cabaret show. I come out with two forks, I give one fork to somebody, one fork to somebody else. I kind of look at the fork and I get my fork to bend, their fork stays the same. I then get my fork to break and I go, well, let's try yours. And then I, I kind of go into the main liquid metal routine in there, in there with their fork. So for me, I've been performing liquid metal for years. It's 100%. I believe that the rights to liquid metal are currently owned by Penguin Magic. So you can get it as a download or a DVD from Penguin. It's highly recommended, it really is. Now, let's talk about the forks, because when I first learned liquid metal, these forks weren't available. And you have to actually bend a fork. That's the secret to liquid metal. You're bending a fork when people aren't looking. And you learn all about the misdirection and when to bend it and how to bend it and so on and so forth on the download. But in essence, you're bending the fork when you're not looking at it. And when I first learned it, I really struggled because I was trying to use forks that I had in my kitchen and they just wouldn't work. They were, it was very difficult to get them to do what I wanted them to do. So I experimented at buying loads of other forks and uh, contacting catering companies and places like that, and that wasn't any good. And then World Magic Shop, uh, the guy, David Penn and the guys at World Magic Shop bought out liquid forks, and that was when it became a bit of a game changer for me. These forks are amazing. They come in packs. Um, you get like five of these, five or six of these in one pack, so you buy them in bulk. They're very reasonably priced. Um, but what it allows you to do is I throw one of these in my close-up case. And when I go out and I do close-up, I just throw one of these in. And when I, uh, when I get to the gig, what I'll do is I'll take three or four forks, I'll put them into my pocket, and then that'll do me for the night. Because this isn't a thing that I do at every single table. It's a thing that I do probably three or four times in a night to the people that I consider the most important people there. Because it's an amazing giveaway. When you've got that fork mangled up and it's signed and it looks absolutely amazing, you give it away. It's something that people do keep. But the thing with these forks is they are, so, first of all, they feel solid. If you give this fork out to somebody, it feels like a solid fork, you know, but it allows you to do stuff very, very easily. So the time bend, for example, you can get that in there straight away. You can get this, uh, the optical bend, any bend that you want to do, uh, the, uh, the twist bend, you know, when you're doing this, all of this stuff. It, it, you can do it very, very, very easily. And the stress bend where you want to get to break, if you're wanting to do that as well, that's really easy. These forks are absolutely amazing. It takes the stuff that you're learning in liquid metal and makes it so much easier to do. So I highly recommend these forks. If you're wanting to do something unique and different in your act, I would recommend contacting World Magic Shop, getting maybe two or three boxes of this because you are going to get through a lot of forks when you practice. You're going to end up with like cutlery everywhere. So get yourself 
three or four boxes of these. The, the forks are worth 100%, absolutely. Such a commercial routine. Then get yourself liquid metal. Learn the two routines together. And when you do, you will have an absolutely show-stopping routine that can be done anywhere. And all you need is a fork in your pocket and you're good to go. Liquid metal, liquid forks, highly recommend it. Okay, so I want to give you a sneak peek of an interview that we've got coming up very, very soon, and that is with the comedy legend Steve Spill. Steve Spill has been a massive influence on my career. This is a guy that's literally done it all and written the book. Literally written the book more than once. I was delighted when he sat down and did an interview for this channel for Talk Magic, and we talked for about an hour and a half. We talked about his career. He gave some wonderful advice. He really did. Uh, and, and you know what? I was actually quite nervous doing this interview. I've been a huge Huge fan of Steve Spill for a long time. Mind reading Goose has been in my act for as long back as I can remember. I mean, Steve is an amazing guy. The interview is going to be dropping soon on the channel, but what I wanted to do was give you a bit of a sneak peek of the interview so you can have a look at the sort of stuff that's coming up when the interview drops in a couple of weeks' time. Have you got any advice on how to inject humor into a, into a performance? Yeah, I think, well, first of all, I think that some people are funny without any sort of, Bob Sheets is one. You could give him a blank, you have him read the phone book, it's gonna come out funny. And there's some people like David Williamson or Michael Finney or whatever, they're just funny, you know. I, I unfortunately am not funny like that. You know, I actually have to write scripts and work on my stuff and, and kind of craft it. And you know, off, uh, today with you, I'm a little bit in between, but normally on the, uh, the scale of being on, I'm usually not on, I'm a two or a three or something. And on stage, I might be seven. And most of the time in my early career, I was very kind of low energy. As I've gotten older, I've become more high energy and more uh, character-ish uh, than I was earlier. And so the evolving sort of thing, like the material that I've released, it's, yeah, I could do that, but it's it's no longer me. I've met people and they say, you're, you know, you're more like you now than, than oh, I've seen on the DVD. And, you know, I don't know what that means, but it's sort of like, you know, I'm not that guy anymore, basically, is kind of what, what it is. Um, there are a lot of techniques that you can use uh, to be, I, one of the things that I um, uh, put in one of my books, I made up an acronym, PESK, P-E-S-K, that, and these aren't my rules, this is my way of kind of remembering them, whether I'm ad-libbing or writing a script, and and, and P is like, you put the punch at the end. You know, if you're gonna do, a lot of times if you do the card on the forehead and it takes a long time for the guy to notice that you have the card on your forehead while he's looking for the card through the deck or whatever, you know, um, it's easy to say, uh, oh, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting real tired of this uh, trick and so on. And the tired really should be at the finish. To make it a tiny bit funnier, it should be this trick makes me real tired. So they want to hear the tired, the punch is sort of at the end. So the P is sort of for punch. Whether you're ad living or writing a script, that helps. The E is um, to uh, exaggerate. So you're with, with the card on the forehead guy and he sees the card on the forehead and you know, don't feel bad. The last guy that did this, he was a hundred years old and so on. Well, you know what? A thousand year old is funnier because nobody's a thousand years old. So, you know, He's there and he's, and you know, it took the last guy, you took longer than the last guy to know somewhere and he was a thousand years old, better than a hundred years old. So the exaggeration is kind of the, um, the other thing is uh, to be really as specific as you can. You know, uh, uh, the finish alone, like the missionary position alone doesn't cut it. You need a midget and a monkey and a bottle of head and shoulders to get any kind of boner. You really want to have some specificity, specificity. Sorry, I'm not to uh, you know, take a drink, getting my uh, uh, words. Uh, and then uh, K is an old one. Just the K sound is really uh, good. As, if you have a choice of words, you, um, you know, that thousand year old guy from Kazakhstan on the Caspian Sea is uh, funnier than Stuart from Sepulveda. It just, there's some reason I don't know if it's really true or not, but I always kind of, that K sound kind of thing sort of helps. Um, the other thing is this, uh, for magicians, you have a big advantage over a lot of other type of performers. You can start to develop a Rolodex. 
in your brain because these a lot of things situations come up over and over again on the very low end you're always going to have audience volunteers you should have a big rolodex in your brain about funny things to say with people's names where they're from what their job is so that um if the and you, know, you ask a guy who's helping you what's your name he says rich and you say oh not by the looks of the outfit so there you go guys that's another five by five in the bag i hope you enjoyed it let me know in the comments down below what you think i'd love to know your opinion let's get a dialogue going and also don't forget if you want to see more videos like this please like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and tell all your friends about magic tv i'm going to be back again tomorrow with a talk magic so i'll see you then at nine o'clock don't forget we've got a shorts going out at two o'clock and at six o'clock we've got a magic Live. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.